Hey guys, welcome to Digital Strainy channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you happen to like this video at the end of it, do not forget to hit the like button. Okay, now let's get to the topic of discussion here, which is attention units. Okay, so I'm going to talk about attention in the context of unit and attention by itself is a pretty uh, a broad topic or a topic where you have a lot of applications when it comes to deep learning. But in the context of unit, what attention means is exactly what I'm trying to show in this image. What do you mean by attention in English? Attention is basically focusing on things we care about and uh, not focusing on things that we do not care about. So in this image, if you care more about these mitochondria and not about the background, so think of uh, a way that you can de-emphasize the background and emphasizing the foreground or paying attention, more attention to the foreground, which happens to be mitochondria in this case. So by doing that, we are actually putting all the mitochondria that we are interested in, in focus and uh, everything out of focus, let's say. Okay, now let's understand how that gets achieved. Okay, so first of all, I should refer you to this paper uh, that actually proposed attention in the context of unit. Uh, uh, I like this title, learning where to look for the pancreas. In the example I showed you, we are trying to learn where to look for mitochondria. That's the only difference, okay? And here is the reference, and I'll try to leave the link uh, to this in, as part of the description. If not, it's right here on the screen, okay? Now, attention in unit is a method, like I mentioned, it's a method to highlight, okay, only the relevant activations during training. And that can potentially help with your computational resources because you're not wasting a lot of time on the areas where you don't care about and only the ones where you uh, care a bit uh, more, right? So this provides better generalization of your uh, network. Now I should warn you that this is not necessarily making your units faster. It's just that in a given amount of time, the type of quality of result that you would actually get from adding this attention to your unit is, uh, we'll find out if it is slightly better or significantly better in the next video where we are going to actually do the coding part, but it will be hopefully better than regular unit. Otherwise, there's no point in them proposing this, right? So there are two types of attention. One is hard attention and the other one is soft attention. So let's quickly cover hard attention. This refers to highlighting relevant regions by cropping, meaning if you see in mitochondria, just crop that area, right? So just crop these areas and then use those areas. So this is uh, wh uh, what they refer by hard attention. And by, by hard, as part of hard definition, they're using one region of an image at a time, meaning you're cropping them. You're not looking at this entire region and then you're going through convolutional network, right? You're only looking at a small patch in that specific image. So that means this is definitely not differentiable. You're just cropping. Cropping is a not a differentiable operation and you need some other type of uh, learning if you would really want to do hard attention, okay? And network uh, in this example can either pay attention because you have a cropped image or it doesn't pay attention because you don't have any regions of interest. So nothing in between. So back propagation cannot be used when it comes to hard attention. That's a different discussion. So let's not focus on hard attention. Let's focus on soft attention. Soft attention refers to weighting different parts of the image. Okay, this is basically in summary, you're just uh, giving weights to each part of your image and relevant parts of image get large weights. Wherever there is a mitochondria, you hopefully will see larger weights and less relevant part get small weights, okay? And this basically means we can train this using backpropagation. And during this backpropagation, during our training, the weights that we are assigning also get trained, making the model pay more attention to relevant regions as the training goes by. Okay, initially it may not be, but eventually as the training goes by, the weights get more and more focused in areas where you're trying to pay attention and uh, not much in the other regions. That's all, uh, that's all it comes down to. So uh, if you would like me to summarize this, I would say it adds weights to pixels based on its relevance. That's pretty much it, okay? Now let's look at uh, a standard unit. Again, you have a uh, convolutional block and it gets repeated and you see these skip connections, right? And again, I hope you understand why we have skip connections. Why? Because at the lower side, like on the left-hand side, you have more spatial information, yeah? So that spatial information provides the context 
when we are uh, trying to uh, get to these layers. That's all this is. I think I have written that down, right? So right there, when you do this concatenation, it combines the spatial information that you get from the downsampling uh, uh, path or the encoder path with the upsampling path or the decoder path, okay? And this helps, this keep connections or these shortcuts, they are uh, very helpful in providing the spatial information, okay? But the problem with this process is that it brings along poor feature representation because at the earlier stage during this encoder path, the feature representation is pretty weak, right? I mean, the, you learn more and more features as you go deeper and deeper into the network. At the, at the initial layers, you don't have a lot of feature information. Okay, this is this is a, a, a problem here, and that's what we hope to address using attention. So soft attention, if we can implement that at these skip connections, wherever there is a skip connection, if we can actually add a soft attention where we have the weights for these mitochondria in this example, then uh, that can uh, help us very well. So in this example, I'm just showing you, I should have added one right here, but I'm just showing you these uh, attention gates at every skip connection right there, okay? So for now, hopefully at a high level, you understand that, okay, attention is there to provide more weightage to features of interest, okay? And then uh, there are two arrows right there. One is called the gating signal, like it's, it's basically a query gating signal. And then uh, the other arrow is the skip connection part. We'll get to that in a second. So I just wanna make sure I explain the two, uh, you know, I, I explained this block right there. Okay, now here is uh, uh, directly from the paper I just showed you, an image directly from that paper, attention coefficients. So this is three, six, 10, 60, and 150 epochs. As you see, as the number of epochs go by, the weights or the attention is more and more uh, focused towards the region of interest right there, okay? So that's, that's all we're trying to achieve. Now let's understand how this is constructed, first of all. Okay, now if you expand this attention gate, you'll see that there are two inputs, okay? Don't, again, I'll go through this, so uh, I know at the first look it may look like two, too many things happening, but this attention gate right there, there are two inputs. One is called X, the other one is G, okay? G is pretty obvious. The gating signal, we already said right there, the green arrow is the gating signal, and X is that connection right there, okay? So if you look at this, the X is coming from there, and G is coming from here. So there will be a slight difference in uh, the dimensions, right? Because this is coming directly. I think I put that in uh, text over there. It takes two inputs, X and G, and G is the gating signal. It comes directly from one step lower right here, okay? And X is coming from one step higher up there, okay? And since this comes from a deeper part of the network, right? This input is coming from a very deep part of the network. So that means this has much better feature representation. Yeah, so this is giving us very good features. It already hopefully knows what is rounded and what is uh, you know, sharp edges and what is the texture and so on. So it has all this information from our training. And X is coming from the skip connection, like I mentioned, so right there. So G from here, X from there. And X comes from earlier layers. And by definition, it has from earlier layers means you have better spatial information, but not much feature information. So why is attention, uh, you know, uh, potentially can do a good job? Because you have the best of two worlds. You have the spatial information from the skip connection and you have this information that's coming, you know, the, the feature information from here, and then it combines them both. Now let's look at this diagram, what's happening. Okay, so if you look at this block, let's call this an attention block. X, G, we know where they are coming from. So let's start with this example. For example, if my G is 64 by 64 by 64, remember X is coming from one level upper, but during the uh, from the encoder, X can be 128 by 128 by 128. Okay, this 64 is the number of features, okay? Now, what's happening here? One by one, one by one, and number of filters equals to 128. That's what this convolution is. And for X, it's one by one, and the stride is two by two. It's not clear here in this diagram, but the stride is two by two. Why is that important? What does that mean? When you put stride equals to two by two, what happens to your dimensions? They go down by half. 
and my number of filters I'm not changing I'm just leaving it to 128 so the output from here is 64 by 64 by 128 because we have number of filters as 128 and here we have 64 by 64 by 128 because of the stride being 2 by 2 both exactly the same dimensions that means we can add them okay so here we are adding them so the aligned weights when we add them yeah if you have uh, you know 0 0.9 and uh, uh, you know 0 0.9 you have like a much higher weight right so 1.8 now so aligned weights get larger while the unaligned weights get relatively smaller so if it's like 0.1 and 0.1 they get like 0.2 much smaller so that's what addition really helps with once you add it you're sending them through ReLU activation, which is obviously, as you know, below zero, it's zero, and above zero, it's whatever the linear uh, you know, value is. Okay, so once you do this, following this, your psi right there is one by one operation. So we are doing one by one with number of filters equals to one. What that does is it gives us a vector uh, or a tensor of psi 64 by 64 by one, okay? These are nothing but the weights. Basically, these are the weights for our input. But then these weights can, can go anywhere from zero to infinity because we are using a uh, ReLU activation function. So we need to bring them back to a sp uh, range that's meaningful. That's why we have a sigmoid right there. So all of these weights are brought back to between zero and one. Okay. And once this is done, you have your weights. All you need to do is resample them or upsample them to the same size as x okay upsample to original size which is 128 by 128 and once it's the same size as x now you can go ahead and multiply these two okay right there so you're taking this x and you're taking the output from here and you're multiplying this element wise so in a way think of this as at each pixel that's coming from x you're multiplying the pixel value with a weight value that we calculated using this process, right? Except in that case, the weights are also being updated as you're doing the training. And the output goes to the next layer as usual. As usual. So I hope the flow makes sense. Once it makes sense, it's very easy for you to code, okay? So now let's go ahead and have a quick look at how to code this. So, uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's call this phi or phi g, and this is theta x. Okay, so now let's look at the first part of the code. So when you're when you're when you're uh, writing your attention block, okay, you're defining your theta right there x. X is just the input, right? So theta x is basically a one by one convolution with a stride of two by two, okay, and applied on x. That's all your theta is and your phi or phi right there is again one by one convolution that's it on your gating signal right there that's it and once you have that then the output you're concatenating it uh sorry you're adding them well same thing concatenating or adding so you're using layers dot add and you're adding these two phi and theta once you add them you're sending it through ReLU activation down here and then the psi right here is one by one with n equals to one filters, right? Where is it? Right there. One by one with n equals to one. Once you have this, the next step is to put all the values between zero and one using sigmoid. That's exactly what we're doing right there. Activation sigmoid applied onto your psi. Okay. And the output of this uh, sigmoid, you're going to upsample it. Upsample to what size? Upsample to the size of x. You see, we are getting the shape of x right there. We are going back to the shape of x right here and finally our y is basically you multiply operation between your up sample right there and your input x okay and then you can add batch normalization if you want and then you return the results that's it okay so this is your uh, attention and uh, i hope uh, this at least the concept makes sense so in the next tutorial let's go ahead and see how we can uh, put our knowledge that we gained on uh, uh, residual networks and recurrent networks and attention and see if there is any clear advantage of any of these over regular unit
okay so again let's meet again in the next uh, tutorial please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and uh, enjoy thank you